Hey everyone, it's Zinnia here, and today I wanted to show you how you can add a shop to any Scratch game. This will be a two-part series. In part one, I'll show you how to add one item that the player can buy. And then in part two, I'll show you how to buy a speed upgrade that affects the gameplay and more. So yeah, let's get started with part one. You can add this shop to any game. I'll use this game as an example, which is pretty much a combination of my virtual town game, so you can walk around and move between backgrounds, and my item collecting game, so you can pick up these coins. And the link to this starter project will be in the description. So you'll want to have a background that can be the shop background. I found this one online. You could also draw one or use one of these patterns backgrounds from the library. And first things first, let's make a shop button that can open up the shop and a close button to close it. I'm gonna use this button from the library as a base and make those two buttons. And when the shop button is clicked, I'll switch the backdrop to the shop. Nice. And then when the close button is clicked, I'll have it go to grass one. So we can switch between them. Now, right now everything looks a mess because we have all the sprites showing on both backdrops. So let's make it so that the sprites that should be in the game world only show when we're in the game world and the close button will only be there in the shop screen. So to do that, for these sprites that we want to appear in the world, we can say when the green flag is clicked, show, and I'll drag that code and give it to all of them. And for the close button, we can make it hide when the green flag is clicked. So let's try that out. Oh, and we can also switch it to a grass backdrop when the game starts. Okay, nice. And then when we click the shop button, let's send out a message called like go to shop and we can make all these world sprites hide when they get that message. And we can make the close button show at that point. And then when the close button is clicked, we can send out a message called exit shop and then make all the world sprites appear at that point and make the close button hide. So this lets us switch back and forth between the shop and the world. Now that we've got our buttons, let's make some things that the players can actually buy when they go to the shop. So to start, let's make a red shirt that the player can buy for two coins. And I'll draw that red shirt really quick. Lovely. And to put that item in the shop, I will paint a new sprite and write out the item name and its cost. And I'll also put a buy button. I'll give this sprite the same show and hide code as the close button so that this one appears in the shop. Now, when this sprite is clicked, what do we want to happen? Well, it depends on how many coins the player has, because if they don't have enough coins, then it should probably tell them, you know, you don't have enough coins, you can't buy this item yet. So to start, I will drag out an if else block from the control category. And with this block, you can make different things happen depending on whether or not something is true in your game. So let's say if the coins, and I'll drag out this coins variable, are less than two, then we can have this button say, you know, not enough coins. So let's try that out. Okay, nice. And if the player does have enough coins, well, we should keep track of the fact that they just got the red shirt. And we can do that by creating a new variable and I will call it bought red shirt. And then in this case, when the player clicks on it and they have enough coins to buy it, then I will set bought red shirt to true. So let's try that out. So that sets it to true. And at the beginning of the game, I will set bought red shirt to false to show that when the game starts, the player hasn't bought it yet. I will also have it play a sound effect. And I should also decrease coins by two so that the player like actually has to pay for the shirt. So okay, change coins by negative two to decrease it. So let's give that a try. There we go. So now bought red shirt is true and my coins were taken away. Now, let me show you how to make it so that that purchase actually affects the game from now on. So I want the player to do something different in the game, depending on whether or not they have the shirt. So I can drag out another if else block, and I can have them do one thing if bought red shirt is true, and another if it's not true. So if it's true, I want to change the costume to the red shirt costume. And if it's false and they haven't bought the red shirt yet, then I will switch the costume to blue shirt. And then you just have to think about when do you want them to check 
if bot red shirt is true. And I think in my game, I will have them check it when they exit the shop. So every time they leave the shop, they'll check if they should change their shirt color. So let's try that out. I will get some coins and go to the shop and then buy the shirt. And now there you go. I have got this red shirt on and I used a red shirt as the example, but you might have something totally different in your shop. And all you'd have to do is just make a variable to keep track of whether the player bought that item and then have them do something different based on whether or not they bought it yet. In part two, I'll show you how to do more things like add a speed boost that affects how fast the player moves and how to buy multiples of certain items or make it so that the game only lets the player buy an item once. Um, but yeah, we'll get to all that in the next video uh, for now. I hope you enjoyed and I can't wait to see all the shops you come up with. Um, yeah, I'll see you next time and scratch on.